In this ever-changing world, it's a challenge for organisms to both adapt and to flourish. It takes a fair amount of strength to thrive and survive, and when you think of strength, features like a large body mass or intricate skeletal structure may come to mind. However, there are organisms lacking these features that are flourishing nonetheless. Many of these organisms we classify as invertebrates. I'm Ryan Murphy, and I'll be your host on a tour of the world of some of these creatures living here in the great state of Alabama that are spineless but brave. I'm here at Blue Water Park, a premier dive site in Pelham, Alabama, and today we're going to be taking a look at Craspidacusta sourbii, commonly known as the freshwater jellyfish. All jellyfish belong to the phylum Cnidaria, a taxonomic class of tentacle-bearing organisms with radial symmetry. This freshwater jellyfish belongs to the class Hydrozoa and is polymorphic, meaning that they can be found in both the stationary polyp form or the more commonly known free-floating hydromedusa form. Originally native to the Yangtze River Valley in China, Craspidacusta sourbii spread across the world, most likely hitching a ride on ornamental aquatic plants shipped for trade. These jellyfish can now be found throughout the world. In North America, they are mainly found around the Great Lakes region in U.S. states with an eastern temperate climate. Craspidacusta sourbii is classified as an invasive species to North America, or a non-native species to the ecosystem. The quarry here at Blue Water Park stretches about 26 acres. The water depth ranges from 4 to 140 feet, with an average depth of 100 feet, which is an ideal environment for these jellyfish. These freshwater jellies tend to be most active from late summer through fall. Craspidacusta sourbii can reproduce through either sexual or asexual means. Their method of reproduction is highly dependent on a variety of environmental factors and their proximity to other jellyfish. Sexual reproduction may be less common in some populations that may go for years between blooms, or large gatherings of the same species. Population blooms may be affected by things such as fluctuations in water temperature, food population, and the alkalinity of the water source, basically the same factors you would have to monitor to keep a tank of pet fish alive. Now, in order for any organism to survive, they need to consume energy in some form or fashion. While they may look fragile and majestic, these spineless critters are natural-born killers. Around their bell-shaped body, Craspidacusta sourbii can have up to 400 tentacles, each tentacle contains thousands of specialized stinging cells called cnidocytes. Each cnidocyte contains a tiny barbed coiled thread with a fluid capsule. When triggered by a physical or chemical signal, the barb launches out to stab and poison prey. This is how Craspidacusta sourbii hunts. The hydromedusa drifts through the water until its tentacles collide with zooplankton or other prey. Once the prey is effectively poisoned and paralyzed, the tentacles coil around the prey and move it up through the mouth and into the manubrium, or stomach, for digestion. While these little guys are sinister predators on the micro scale, Craspidacusta sourbii doesn't grow much larger than a penny, so their stinging cells aren't powerful enough to pierce human skin. In other words, these divers are relatively safe swimming alongside them. However, that doesn't mean that these jellies aren't influential on the macro scale in other capacities. Jellyfish are particularly interesting in that they have shown surprising resistance to climate change and rising water temperatures. This has made them a prime target for several research teams across the globe. To learn more about jellyfish response to climate change, I spoke with Dr. McClintock, a local expert on marine and aquatic invertebrates at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. So, uh, marine biologists noticed, probably within the last, uh, I would say, 10 or 15 years, 
that marine jellyfish, the ones that are found in oceans, um, have really exploded in their population numbers. Uh, here in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Alabama, uh, the moon jellyfish comes to mind. Uh, it's a very common jellyfish about the size of a frisbee. We have had some absolutely huge blooms. So what we're seeing with jellyfish is it seems that as the seas are warming, um, they actually are doing very well. Uh, and that's a little bit concerning because jellyfish are very, very voracious predators of plankton. And they're competing for these little organisms uh, that fish are eating and other types of organisms are eating. So, so there is the potential that with large blooms of jellyfish, you could actually have some negative effects on some of the fish species and things like that. But I think the general consensus is that, uh, that things that are made of jelly-like material are gonna do very well in a warming world. Where is future research going looking into this? What can, we, what can we learn from these jellyfish? Well, I think what you're seeing is that there is uh, an emphasis on studying jellyfish. It's increased since climate change has come on the scene. The biologists that study the, the jellyfish in regard to climate change would be monitoring the various environmental conditions that are changing in the ocean. So population ecology, environmental physiology, taking the jellyfish uh, into the laboratory and putting them under controlled conditions that mimic the future of climate change. So there's lots of interesting stuff that can be done with jellyfish as it relates to climate change. As you can see, jellyfish are fascinating creatures. Beyond the study of their abilities as predators and survivors, continued research into these organisms may yield promising insight into larger scale world issues, such as adapting to and combating climate change. In a vast world full of overwhelming challenges, these jellies continue to adapt and develop to help ensure their continued survival. Truly, they are a species that are spineless but brave.